Just about the coolest police car you'll ever see. Here's your look at the 3-0 Pat Labor Ingram Unit 1. The Ingram Unit 1 Collectible is a 135th scale, approximately 23 centimeters tall, articulated figure with remarkable zinc alloy die cast main frame, providing nearly 50 points of articulation. The figure is constructed of ABS, PVC, and POM, with fabric detail covering the elbows, knees, wrists, and hips to complete the Ingram silhouette. Three Zero's notable weathering effects are added on each of the fabric pieces to create an enhanced authenticity. Before we get a closer look at the Ingram Unit 1, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. I'd also like to send out a thank you to the folks over at 3-0 who made this review possible. If you are in the market of picking up the Ingram suit for yourself, you should be able to start finding it. I believe it's released in a second quarter of 2020, so it should start surfacing now. Uh, I'm actually taking it way past his head. You're probably asking where it's going. I'm taking it to the very top of its highest antenna, as seems that's the highest point of the figure. And we're going to stop the tape measure right there. According to my trusty tape measure, the very top of the Ingram Unit 1 stands 9.9 .9 inches in height. And that, centimeters, works out to be 25.1, so a little over 25 centimeters tall. The first thing we'll address is the display stand that comes included with the figure. I'm looking at this and I can't help but feel that sense of deja vu like I've seen the stand before. The more notable recent one that I can think of is Optimus Prime having a similar stand to this. It basically works the same way. You have an adjustable neck that hinges back and forth. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Just want to show you the detail done onto the surface of the base. And while it's really only just the plastic of the black plastic giving you the color, it's a really, again, nice, effective looking base to display the figure atop of. As I said, this part is adjustable. This hinges back and forth, and this part here shifts back and forth as well. The neat thing that 3.0 incorporates to their pieces, though, is a locking mechanism. So while this does shift back and forth, if you are worrisome that you're going to be putting your pat labor on top of it and it's going to shift on you, you can actually find the desired groove, line it along the teeth lines on either side, and then you just drop this part down this little button lever right here. Once that's locked in place, it doesn't actually go anywhere and the neck stays st strong and sturdy while holding the, the Ingram unit in the air. Of course, whatever pose you decide to put it in for yourself. This section, however, this shifts up and down and in order to drop it down again, you have to press this button this button right here, and it allows you to drop the track back down. You can see a nice strong ratchet joint again locks it in place. So if you are looking to display the figure, even in a flight pose, which certainly would be a strong contender for a piece like this, you can do that with the stand and you don't have to worry that the stand isn't, first of all, going to hold the weight of the unit because there is a lot of metal on this unit. And secondly, you certainly don't want it to topple over. With the base being able to lock in place the way that it is this way and this way, it does, like I said, guarantee you that the figure isn't going to fall when it's put on the display stand. To put the figure onto the stand, simply just spin it around and locate the license plate just past the point of the waist. You're going to pop this off and make sure, of course, you put that somewhere where you're not going to lose it if you decide down the road. You don't want to put necessarily the Ingram unit on the stand. You want to make sure, of course, you can still retrieve that at a later date. Immediately, you are treated to a rectangular peg hole that so happens to match the same peg, at least shape-wise, that's at the top of the adjustable neck. You just line the two up and fit them in place. And while it doesn't seem like that's enough to really hold this in place, one thing that works in your favor is this little additional lip down below. It looks like the bottom of a jaw. It actually fits inside that little opened area at the bottom of the peg hole. So not only are you snapping this in place, but this little piece actually fits inside the cavity of the mobile Ingram unit. And then at least when you do snap it in place, it guarantees it that it's not going to be going anywhere. The only thing that worries me about that, repeated popping this off, I mean, there is resistance, of course, when you are pulling it. I haven't seen it so far yet, but I'm worrying that because of the thin nature of this plastic at the bottom, this little extra lip, 
repeated popping them back into that slot opening here and pulling this back out. I'm wondering if we'll eventually start developing stress marks. So far, knock on wood, I haven't had any issues with it just yet, but it's certainly something to consider when you are maybe putting this on display. Personally speaking, when it comes to putting the Ingram unit on display, I'm likely not going to be putting it in a flight pose or a dynamic pose like I've currently got it right now. Yes, I know, I understand. That's not the most dynamic of poses going right now. I'm probably just going to be having it standing on top of the base, firmly planted to the flooring. But again, I like the option that at least 3-0 gives you something like this. And with the guarantee that it's not going to go anywhere, I'm not going to shake it, of course, back and forth, that peg certainly also helps that little lip to guarantee you that when you are looking to put this piece on display in something a little bit more than just standing him up, at least this stand isn't going to let you down. It's nice and secure, and like I said, it's going to keep it in place until you decide to remove it later. Looking at the figure's accessories, we'll start with one of the smallest. This is the little tiny pilot that's going to go inside the Ingram unit, and this is the pilot Azumi Noah. Very detailed to the point where almost the camera doesn't even quite pick it up, so hopefully it's able to catch everything on here. For as small as this is, the fact that they were even able to put the details done on the sides of the sleeves and the helmet is quite the feat indeed. I mean, it's very small. It's really even hard to pinpoint how small it is. Well, if we take, for example, the revolver... If you put the two side by side, Azumi is about the same size as the revolver, which is crazy. Again, the fact that they were able to put as much paint as they did in that. Azumi actually does have the capabilities of going inside the unit. Uh, for this, of course, it's going to involve me opening up the cockpit, which I'll show you guys in a second. But before we do that, I want to show you guys the rest of the accessories that come included with the figure. Seeing as we were talking about it, we might as well look at the revolver next. The hand revolver cannon comes included with the figure, and like in the cartoon, it does actually have the means to house not only in the hand of the Ingram unit, but also holstered in the side of the leg. I'll show you guys that in a second. It's a very nice detailed revolver, painted in a very dark gunmetal gray with the chestnut colored brown handle finishes off the piece rather nicely and while there's nothing moving component wise on this again it's just a nice faithful recreation of the revolver that it has in the show you can have a couple of different pistol hands holding hands that is like i said you can fit it inside the hand you just take one of these supplied hands this one specifically has the trigger finger so you can see that the hand holds it perfectly fine and you'll just simply swap it out on the socket there the neat thing about it though is i'm just going to pry this off just for the second just for the time being because i want to show you guys something really cool about this if you take the figure and you open up the leg holster get a gander at this the holstered leg opens up and shifts up along a track the actual area that the revolver can fit inside simply just line it up and it fits inside it's a bit of a snug fit i have to admit um, you actually want to have it just a little bit further down than the end of the barrel and just line it up like that you'll hear a nice snap in place and then when you are ready to close it watch how it shifts itself down just push that in there we go it's a little tight but you'll see that it drops it swings in concealing the revolver until it needs it there you can kind of see how it happens there it shifts on an angle and it tucks itself conveniently in the side of the leg we'll do it again just kind of open it up and when it is ready to retrieve the revolver, it shifts up, ready to be drawn. The neat thing also about it, too, is obviously the hand can't reach the revolver in its current state. So again, like referenced in the show, this whole section of the arm does swing down. It kind of slides down on a track, and it allows the... There you go. It allows the Ingram unit to actually be able to grab the revolver. Really clever the way that they've done that. I am a little worried about this being a sliding piece. So this is something, of course, you want to be a little careful of, especially when it comes to swapping out the hands. The hands are simply rooted on ball joints. You can easily just wiggle that off. But on this hand specifically, unlike this hand right here, when you are pulling it, you kind of want to make sure you're holding on to this piece and then wiggle the hand off of the ball joint. Because if not, if you are pulling and yanking this, you could cause damage to the tracked the additional extension of the hand that comes out from the forearm. Again, I really like the way that they've done that and the fact that it's accurate to the way it was in the show. 
Again, if you are looking then not to display the Pat Labor with it, simply just close it up just like that. And you can keep the revolver ready and kind of hidden away until it eventually needs it. Next thing we'll have a look at is the Riot Shotgun, a almost fully functional shotgun, short of actually firing off a round. It does actually have a swing out stock located on the back, which does have a back section that hinges as well. Be careful when you are hinging this back. It's only attached by these little tiny pegs on both sides. And while it won't necessarily break, you'll find yourself as you are swinging the stock out probably having to go and put it back in its place where it rightfully belongs. The coloring of the shotgun is rather nice. It's still that dark gunmetal gray, similar to the revolver that we also had a look at, with only a slight color variation underneath there, with a more lighter colored gray. It's again a nice addition and something probably going to be displayed when it comes to displaying the Pat Labor for myself. It also gets itself a shield, and the shield can be attached to the forearm. I'll show you guys that in a second as well. And it comes with two variations of the Riot Stun Stick. The Stun Stick, actually what's neat about it though, is if you take the smaller version, the one that's not fully extended, it fits just on the underside of the shield, slides it up and conveniently keeps it away until it needs it. When it does need to pull it, of course, it just slides right out from the track, and it does have two variations of that. One, again, retracted, one fully extended, and it's sharing a very similar color scheme between the two. When you are looking, though, however, going back to the shield, which I must say is very nicely painted here, done in a shiny black with a equally shiny white up the middle panel there. Uh, but if you are looking to put the shield in or on the forearm. There's one thing about the figure here. It's these little tiny pegs and the only way to remove them, you actually have to get your finger in there and you have to pop these out. These are very, very small, something of which I'm very worried that I'm gonna be losing if I'm not too careful. I feel almost in a way that if they had only incorporated a magnet to the shield instead, you wouldn't even have to go the route of popping those out in the first place. You would just simply attach the shield by magnet. But instead, you have to take these two pegs out, those little two peg covers, revealing the peg holes on the arms, and then you just simply take the shield pegs and you just pop those in place. I mean, at least it gives you a full finished look that it looks like in practic practical ways, at least it's attached to the forearm. I just don't like the idea of something so small like that. I feel like I'm going to be losing it guaranteed. Could they have probably pulled this off with, say, a magnet, for example? I think they could have, and it certainly would have avoided the hassle of having to pop these little peg covers off every single time I wanted to add the shield. Next thing we'll look at is the options for hands available. The Pat Labor Ingram Unit 1 comes with a fair share of hands, actually. Comes with a pair of relaxed hands, for example. Sometimes you get so ahead of yourself looking at the figure as a whole that you sometimes don't stop to appreciate the amount of care and detail that they put into even things such as small hands. I mean, if you look at the panel lining that they've done to each of the individual knuckles, how those stand out, both on the front and on the back, there's a lot of extra, again, additional details that if you don't stop for a second and actually really appreciate them, you can kind of really overlook them at times. So it does come with a pair of relaxed hands. It comes with a pair of relaxed hands. I so feel compelled to say him. Uh, there's also a pair of trigger hands. The thing about it though, is they're actually on the bolt on the same side. They're on that side right there. I guess the intent really is to probably display the, the stun stick on this side with the shield and then likely display the firearms on the left side which would then explain why you have variations of essentially the same side hand. The figure also has a couple of dynamic hands, which again are just a slight variation to the one that we already had a look at. Let's just grab the other one here so you guys can see. One is more just flat fingers, and then this one has the more curl happening to the fingers. Again, really nicely detailed. I do appreciate that additional panel lining that they added to each one of those knuckles. And last but certainly not least, there is just a stick holding hand. Certainly if you want to do take, for example, the stun stick, which is a little hard to kind of fit it in between the fingers. I found it at times before, I had to just kind of wiggle them in place. But the stun stick does stay well enough in the hand, just takes a little bit of negotiating. Negotiating is probably the best word to describe it, to actually get it in between the fingers, the fingers here and the thumb. The last thing that the figure does come included with, for accessories at least, is an alternate face plate. 
To accomplish this look, this is something you gotta be a little careful of. You have to basically pull the head off the ball joint. And while that's fairly easy to do in the first place, you wanna be very careful of these antennae that are at the side of the shoulders. You don't wanna clip those. Kind of just grab the figure from its torso and very carefully wiggle it off the ball joint. Eventually it will free itself, but it seems that it is using a metal ball joints in favor of plastic. And that's basically what the head sculpt looks like. You're simply just gonna grab the bottom, slide the face plate off. It just attaches right there to the peg hole on the underside. And then take the one that you wanna swap it to and you just slide that back into place. And then you have that head sculpt there or that face plate there. Personally, of the two, I kind of like the larger visor myself. While this one actually does have translucent green plastic, the one with the swappable faceplate here with the battle guard over top actually only has that green been painted in with a metallic green. It still gives you the same effect. Of the two though, I prefer this faceplate myself over this one instead. One neat thing that the figure does possess as well is light up sirens. You just for that pull off the shoulder pieces on both sides just put the figure down here for a second. Inside both of these, they're a little harder at times and other times they just fall out, is these little circuit trays. Inside of that is then you're gonna take two AG1 batteries, which aren't included with the release here of the Ingram Unit 1, but they're fairly common, easy to pick up. Uh, once you have those, you just pop them into the front here, the two open trays, and then from there, you just line this up. There's a little kind of groove in the top section right there. It's not quite dead center, it's just a little further up. So when you are putting it in, the battery compartment, the slots for the batteries at least, go to the bottom. That makes sense. Does that make sense? That makes sense, I hope. See the little, like I said, the little slots at the top, the batteries are gonna go at the bottom. And when you are putting it in as well, you wanna make sure that the switch is the thing that's sticking up, because that's obviously gonna be the thing that you're gonna turn on and then put it back into the shoulder section. Again, you do it on this side here as well. Just press the button, flip it upside down, and slide it into the bay. It's easy enough at least, while there isn't any buttons on the outside of the unit to activate the light switch, at least when it comes to changing the batteries. I don't feel like I have to then start dismantling the whole thing to get to the battery compartment. With this, it's really easy actually. You're just sliding this off. Sometimes these trays do slide out, but it's simply just again a fix of putting it back into the slot, lining up to the groove there, and just putting it back into the shoulder compartment. And again, it looks really nice, the fact that they do have that. It doesn't have sound effects, granted, no. And while you probably aren't gonna be displaying this all the time with the, with the cherries going, at least, it is a nice touch that 3.0 would incorporate that in the first place. Going back to the pilot, to Zumi Noah, you can actually put it inside the Ingram unit. What you are gonna do is this front black section, sort of wanna just pinch it on both sides and then just pull it forward. Shift it as far forward as you can get it. That goes to about there. And then from there, this shifts up. The bottom half, you can then drop down. And I don't know if you can actually see it or not, but there's a little tiny cockpit. There it is right there, complete with a couple of foot struts down below. Azumi actually will be sitting in along the top here. To pull that off, I shift the head further back. And then from there, you're gonna take this front section and this just, this just pulls up. It's kind of hard to kind of get in there. I knew myself I was probably gonna be needing a screwdriver. So I'm just gonna take that, pull that up like that. There we go. And then from there, you can take your pilot and the pilot, I'd like to, I like to actually put him in from the bottom area here. It's the easiest I find. Just shift him in as far as you can get him and then just take some small tool, like, an, like, a, like I said, a screwdriver, and just kind of fit him up onto the seat. And once he's in place, you may wanna just, there we go, bring him up just a little bit. He's now sitting on the struts, the foot struts there, and you can see him, he's sitting along the top there. From there, you just fold up everything, going back to where you started from, this folds down and then slides back into place. I find sometimes this doesn't slide as easy as it slides out, but at least, if anything, you've got the little pilot Azumi ready to pilot the Ingram Unit 1. And then from there, you can just kind of bring the head over a little bit so you don't see it as much. It's nice the fact that they actually would include the option to put the pilot inside, a nice little added detail that you would have seen in the show in the first place.
getting some closer looks at the Ingram Unit 1. It's actually a futuristic mobile suit, but did you know it was based off of Japanese police cars? One notable police car that many of you Transformer fans would probably recognize as well is Prowl. Prowl was based on a Japanese police car. Fancy that. But a lot of the nuances that you would expect to see in a Japanese police car is present here in the Pat Labor, right down to primarily an all-white armored suit within notable areas of black. And the black itself is very, very nicely painted on here. It's got a semi-gloss sheen that reflects the light rather nicely. White is certainly a problematic color to primarily be making of your whole figure, only because things like decals, or in this, th in this case, I feel like these have actually been printed onto the surface, have to be clean. And if they're not applied properly on white, it stands out like a sore thumb. Luckily, though, 3-0, when they applied all the printing to the surface here, everything is sharp on it, right down to, for example, the license plate located on the lower torso. Plaques, for example, stand out clean and sharp, and even the numbers placed on the side of the Ingram unit's shoulders, again, are very sharp and very cleanly applied there as well. Like, I don't see any issues with the numbers not fully being printed on. I don't see issues where the paint for example, have carried off of the script or the font here, for example, onto the white surface. As I said, white can be very difficult to kind of work with because it shows all the flaws on it. And luckily, in a case like this, I don't see any flaws on a paint level that 3-0 has put into this piece. Surprisingly, the figure has a fair bit of weight to it. It doesn't look the case when you see the size of the figure, but while there is more plastic, I feel, in the arms, for example, the shoulders, the thighs, for example, the torso piece does feel like it's comprised of metal, as well as I feel like the metal is basically from, like, the knee down, right down to the feet. The clever thing about it, too, is they also put foot articulation in it, but there's good hefty weight on the bottom of the Ingram unit, so when you are looking to display it... Um, even with or without the display stand, you get a good strong stance when you put it on display. Because they went the route of metal further down from the knee down, like I said, I feel like you've got a more stability happening here when you're looking to display the figure. Simply just in a standing pose, probably not the most exciting of poses, but if you are looking just, like I said, to put him in a museum pose, that strong, steady sturdiness of the metal down below keeps it firmly planted where it belongs. So let's look at the figure's articulation. The head rotates all the way around. While you are doing this, you want to be very careful of these side antennas that you don't accidentally clip those, nor you clip these on the sides of its head either as well. The ball joint allows the head to rotate technically all the way around. You just want to be very careful while you're doing that. Make sure you're not running up against things like the sirens, for example. And it does also allow the head to move down. In order to move the head up, though, you sort of have to take the whole assembly of the neck. See what I did there? that shifts down and you have some additional clearance this way. The only thing about it though is it does then show off the pilot down below, which is fine for some. I kind of like the idea of having a little bit lower and while still Azumi is still in there piloting it, I don't see him as much. So you can, like I said, bring that neck down a little bit if you so wish. I mean, look, look at the smallest of details, for example. You got the AV98 Ingram here, even on the side. That's crazy the amount of details that they put into this piece. The arms do rotate around. They've got sort of a ratcheted joint happening to them. I feel like when I am rotating it, there's a little bit of resistance. A lot of that could be chalked up to the fact that there's fabric covering basically all the joints. So when you are moving for the, for example, like the arms, Arms out isn't so much the issue. Rotating them all the way around, well, then you're starting to twist that up. And I would fear that something could break as a result of that, so you want to just be careful of that. The arms do hinge out at a full 90-degree angle. Um, they do bend at the elbow, what seems like a double hinge on the elbow, which is good. So, I mean, you can get full mad props if you wanted to. You can pull that off with the Ingram unit. The shoulders also do have their own standalone joint, which allows them to rotate independently from the rest of the arm. The waist is about the only thing that's more limited to this piece. You really can't seem to rotate. I certainly can't rotate anything to the waist itself, but at least when it comes to the legs, the legs split out. You want to be very careful. Let me just move the arm out of the way here for a second that when you are shifting the leg out, you want to be careful that this piece here doesn't butt too much against this. And while that's about as much splits as you can actually get from the figure, you really don't want to force it any bit past that point for risk of either breaking the top of this 
or popping this piece off completely as I feel like it's just seamed and sandwiched together. The unit also does have, let me just bend the knee here, a double hinge on the knee. That's nice that they actually put that into it. And then we had already looked at the foot articulation to a somewhat lesser extent. We'll look at that more so now. This shifts up, that's good that it stays out of the way. Then you have full foot articulation right there. And then you can also bend the toe as well. It's just a little stiffer because these are metal after all, but you can also bend these up and down and you can somewhat rock them back and forth. They, I mean, they rotate back and forth this way. There is a slight ankle pivot, but I don't feel like it's really intended to be there. So I wouldn't really say bend that too much for the risk of damaging the figure. Overall, just a neat looking design figure. The idea that it first and foremost has an opening cockpit that you can actually put a zoomy inside is really a clever touch. The sirens are also a nice bonus accessory. The fact that they actually incorporate that into it is really, really cool indeed. It's a downside, unfortunately, that it doesn't come included with batteries, but then AG1 batteries are pretty easy to come by. I just picked up uh, several trays. I think it was a total of 24 trays from Amazon for about $14. So it was definitely a bit, uh, definitely a deal to pick up batteries like those. Those aren't the batteries that you're going to have to source out some small neighborhood store and you'll have to go to the back of the store to retrieve batteries. No, these are batteries that are easy to come by. AG1s, like I said, you can order them through Amazon. And like I said, it does take two on both sides to activate the sirens. It doesn't have sound effects, no, but the fact that it does have light up options certainly is a plus to an already cool looking figure from 3.0. One last thing I wanted to show you guys as well is these front panels do open up also on the torso. They just hinge up. They're just on straight out hinges. And you can also bring those up as well. I feel as almost as if I would have forgotten it and almost forgot the fact that they were there because of all the other cool things that are on this particular piece. But yes, these also do open up as well if you want to have them displayed with those opened. A lot of cool stuff going on here with 3.0's release of their Palabor Ingram Unit 1. If it was simply just a standalone figure that had posability granted sure to it, I would still love the design of the character. I've always been a big fan of Pat Labor to start off with. But the fact that it does have all these additional bells and whistles that you can kind of pick up and discover along the way. An open cockpit, for example, that houses the pilot Izumi Noah inside. A side holstered leg, which also has the benefit of having the revolver slide up so that drop-down arm can retrieve it. And it does have light-up sirens, all equate to a pretty cool pickup. If you're a fan of the Pat Labor series, it's definitely worth adding to your collection if you ask me. This particular figure here in final looks, because I didn't do too much with the display stand, I decided to incorporate the much needed stand, plugging it into the back where I, got, where I showed you guys earlier. You want to be careful though of that little lip of plastic. I haven't yet had any issues with it, but I feel repeated pulling the figure off, putting it back onto the stand, will probably start developing stress marks because that plastic is so small. Other than that, though, and the likelihood of that ever happening, because I'm probably going to be displaying the Ingram unit in a standing pose anyways. Just in final looks, though, I did want to show you guys that I could put it in a flight or jumping pose. One thing I did actually faux pas and make a mistake of in this review, I just want to correct here in final looks, it does have torso articulation. It just really was stiff on this particular figure. I had tried a couple of times already and didn't think it was going to budge, but I was convinced that there was in fact uh, torso articulation, and sure enough, there is. You can rotate the torso freely back and forth just after that initial kind of navigating, letting it free itself up eventually. I was able to get the torso to move back and forth, so no harm, no there. Definitely though a worthy pickup candidate if you are a big fan of the Palabor series. This is definitely one you're going to be wanting to add to your collection. For all the things that I mentioned and perhaps some of the things that you picked up on your own, it's definitely a nice piece to be adding to your collection anyways. A big thank you to the folks over at 3.0 who are nice enough to send this sample my way. The Pat Labor Ingram Unit 1 should start surfacing already now. So if you are in the market of picking this one up for yourself, I would advise probably just checking around to the various online sites. And certainly local stores right now now, not so much. It's not really happening. Also, if you guys are new uh, to this channel and you're liking this guy's content, thank you for that. Appreciate that. Hit that subscribe button, new members of the mob, and turn the bell notification on. And if you also want to go back and have a look at some of my other 3-0 reviews, there's a playlist just for 3-0. So you can feel, feel the need with a little extra time on your hands to sit down with a cup of cocoa, 
maybe a tall glass of lemonade and sit down and watch all my reviews of the playlist of the three zero figures that I've looked at over the years. Also, stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of videos coming your way. We're going to be looking at a couple of 3-0 upcoming releases as well. As well, sprinkled in there will be a whole bunch of other things going on as well. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.